cruise news time. Well, we certainly know that when cruising resumes in the U.S., there's going to be capacity restrictions. And I've, I've, I've seen a lot of cruisers out there wringing their hands going, look, I've had my cruise booked for a long time. Are they going to bump me off my cruise? Well, it's, it's possible. Look, I've got a few reasons that I, a few ways that I think the cruise lines will make this decision. Uh, are they fair? I don't know, but let, let's, let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to La Lida Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news updates. First, welcome to the show. And yes, don't adjust your TV. It looks different. We're on the road, Loca on the road. This is my mom's house. So, uh, yeah, you're, you're not, uh, your TV's not broken. I got a cruise news story that I want to talk about, and then we will move into this conversation about capacity. A very sad cruise news story. If you got, I don't know if everybody's tracking along, but India is having a very hard time with the virus right now. I saw case count yesterday, 350,000 new cases in India, uh, 17 million infections in the country. I've watched a lot of news coverage. They're, they're struggling uh, for hospital beds. They're struggling for oxygen. If you're somebody who sends positive vibes or praise, uh, please put India on your list. Uh, and, and in the wake of that, Royal Caribbean had to make a decision to cancel the contracts for cruise workers in India, which which makes sense. I, I don't know what else they could do. There's no way they could bring people out of that country and put them on cruise ships. So that that's the cruise news. Uh, the other cruise news, we've been talking about it here and there. We're talking about capacity on cruise ships. I mentioned in the show yesterday that uh, the next phase of the restart of cruising in the UK, they're limiting capacity on cruise ships to 1,000 passengers or 50% of the capacity of the cruise ship. And this isn't new. Like when we've seen cruising start in the Mediterranean, when we see cruising start in Asia, we've seen these numbers 50%, 60%. And so certainly when cruising starts in the United States, there will be a capacity restriction. And it begs the question, and I've seen it several times in the comments, how are they going to decide who gets to stay on the cruise ship? I got three or four, maybe five good reasons. We're going to talk a little bit about fairness. Hopefully we, we do that in a way that's that's fair. But before we get into the reasons, let me quickly invite you to subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you enjoy staying up to date on everything that's going on in cruising, please consider subscribing with the notification bell. That way you don't miss out on any of these episodes. Okay. Cruise lines. Do they have a moral obligation to be fair? That's interesting. Should business be fair or should business be business? How will they make this decision? Now, the first thing that could be true, and, and I've talked to my lovely wife, travel agent extraordinaire, the beautiful Jenny, and I said, Jenny, what are the cruise lines doing? And she said, in many cases, they are limiting capacity, like the, the new Mardi Gras, for example, that's coming out. They're not overbooking that ship. They're not filling it all the way up to capacity. So one thing that the cruise lines are smartly doing is where they can. I, I, we believe that they're already limiting capacity. But then there's other situations where crews may have been on the books for a couple years, and who knows what the capacity is. Maybe there has to be a readjustment. And so how are they going to determine, uh, determine that? I've got a few reasons. The first one, which would be the most sensible and most equitable, most fair to me, is just first in, first out. The old FIFO method. If you ever worked fast food, you know what FIFO is. Or if you ever worked anywhere with logistics or inventory, FIFO, first in, first out. This could apply to cruise capacity. The first person that books the cabin, they have priority over some Johnny come lately that's just recently booked the cabin. They should be given priority. So one way they could do it is first in, first out. Of course, another way that they could do it is they could do it, they could give the loyalty priority, right? Somebody that's uh, royal loyal or somebody that's always gone on carnival, somebody that's got a some fancy colored card high up the chain. Uh, maybe those people should get the first shot. For goodness sakes, they've supported these companies with their cruise dollars. And uh, shouldn't, the, shouldn't the loyal people get priority over the people that aren't loyal to the cruise line? I think that's a very valid way to go about it. Another real possibility is they will look and see who has future cruise credit. Future cruise credit, a little bit of an albatross around the financial neck 
of the cruise companies. Future cruise credits are interesting because a lot of times they've given out more than they actually got. So for example, somebody may have got $125 for the $100 they paid on their cruise. And so the cruise lines really to get their accounting leveled out, they would like to see those future cruise credits go away. If you'll notice like a Norwegian cruise line, they made a decision not to really give out future cruise credit anymore, but to just give refunds as cruises canceled because they're trying to work that future cruise credit out of their system so that they can approach their financials in a, in a more true way. And so maybe they want to get that future cruise credit off the books and they may give priority to people with future cruise credit. The counter argument to that may be though, uh, cruises in the future as the supply of cruise cabins are low and the demand for cruise cabins are high, that means there's gonna be higher prices. So another future cruise credit strategy could be uh, to not give priority to the future cruise credit people. That way they have to book higher priced cruise cabins to make up for the extra money that they gave. That, that could be another business play. Now there's also another business strategy that I do think the cruise lines are using on some level. I'm gonna save that one until the very in. Let me sneak in this one here though. There could be a big spender priority. There could be like a Daddy Warbucks, the Monopoly man priority. And, and all I'm saying here is whoever spent the most money on their cabin, well, let's keep those cabins, right? The cruise lines are trying to make as much money as possible during the restart because they've been over a year without any real revenue. And so you may just uh, list those cabin prices or whoever booked the cabin from most spent to least spent and just chop the least spent people off. You got a nice free casino rate or you got a discounted cruise because you booked way in advance. Well, sorry, we don't have a cabin for you. That could happen too. I think it's worth saying right now that we don't really know how the cruise companies are gonna do this. And so again, a lot of this is uh, speculation and I would invite you at the end to tell me how you think they're gonna do it. But here's the final way and there, there could be some evidence behind this. We saw it when they announced the new summer cruises in the UK. A big component of those cruises is that they had to readjust the itinerary. And so instead of trying to keep people booked on those cruises and readjust the itinerary, they just canceled out the cruises. They did either the future cruise credit or they gave the refund. And then they invited people to come book the new cruises. They, you know, now they're new cruises around the UK. And you could see that happen in the United States, depending what restrictions are put in place. Maybe there's only three or four places you can go. Maybe you can only go to Nassau and Cozumel and Bermuda. And if that's the case, then you may see this reshuffling of itineraries and it may just be easier for the cruise line just to wipe out the cruises that everybody's booked on and then open them up for new bookings. It certainly would be fair. It, it could stink though, right? Because if they wipe out your good priced booking and now you got to rebook something else uh, that costs more, that that could be a little frustrating. But at least uh, from a fairness, people not being disadvantaged that's the way it could happen. Now, I've been saying this all along. The cruise restart's going to be phased. Not every cruise ship will start on the same date. And so even if you have a cruise booked and cruising starts up again, there is a good chance that you will be canceled. And so you still have to be in this mindset of what am I going to do? Am I going to take the offer that the cruise line gives me? Am I going to rebook? Uh, certainly, as we move forward into the U.S. cruise restart, those are going to be questions that us as cruisers have to answer. That's the question I'm going to leave you with. I'm going to leave it in two parts. We'll make it complicated. First, what do you think the cruise lines will do? And then what do you think the fairest thing to do is? And are those the same thing? A question for the comments. Thank you so much for watching the show today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please show your support by hitting the like button. This is Tony with La Lida Loca. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.